Hey, it's John with Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna go over how to create an effective study plan for the ATI TIS. We're gonna go over two different study methods, and then I'm actually gonna show you how to create those study methods. I'm gonna share my screen with you. We'll go by step by step, and by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to create your own study plan and schedule for the TIS exam. Now there's two other videos that go along with this video, sort of sister videos, and those are how to pass the TIS exam and how to study for the TIS exam. And that one's gonna be kind of more general tips and tricks, but there's a lot of really good ones, and it goes right into creating this study schedule. So you're gonna to want to watch all three. Now we put the links uh, to those videos in the description below. Also in the description below, you will find a link to a free TIS practice test. You'll find a link to our Facebook study group that's got thousands of people just like yourself uh, sitting for the TIS exam, getting ready, preparing for it, sharing resources, what's working for them, what's not, asking questions, getting answers. It's a really awesome community and I want you guys to be a part of it. So check that out uh, in the description. Now these are just suggestions. Everybody's got a different learning style and yours is different from mine, but these are really proven methods and proven study schedules that help people get up to a 30% increase in their scores. There are a lot of research based and there's a lot of studies done on the best ways to create study plans and these are the top ones that are really going to help you guys. Now the foundation of a good study schedule is something called active recall. What this really means is that after you study, you need to actively recall the information. You need to force your brain to remember the information that it just learned. And if you don't do that, if you're studying for an hour, walking away from it, or studying for a day, and then not going back to that material, you will forget it over time. So you need to be actively recalling it, and especially right after you study it. So here's a couple ways that you can do that. A great way to do that is after you are studying, whether you're in the study guide book, reading a chapter, or in the online course and you finish a lesson module, close the book, close the online course, and get a piece of paper or a Google Doc or Word Doc and write out what you just learned. Force your brain to remember what all it was that you just read about. Now, you're, gonna, you're not gonna get it all and you don't need to go that deep. You can go pretty high level, just make some bullets on what you just learned. And then go back into the book, back into the online course and see what you missed. Now, these are things that might end up being your weak areas or things that you weren't able to recall. Now, you can take a note of this and make sure that you're kind of paying attention to that next time you go to study this area. But doing that active recall right after you study is going to help you. Another great way to do this is to write your own practice questions after you study a, a lesson module or a chapter in the book. So you might be studying, I don't know, the scientific method. So write that practice question. After you close the book and finish that lesson, say, what is the what are the steps of the scientific method? And list them out. Uh, and then create yourself a couple other practice questions. And that's just making your brain remember what you just learned and writing a question about it. So another foundational element to a good study schedule is something called distributed learning. So what that means is that you want to be studying more frequently, even if it's in smaller amounts, than doing one cram session. So you want to study one hour a day for seven days is much better than studying seven hours in one day. And it's that repetition, it's that kind of uh, active recall and being able to go each day, remember a little bit more. And we see this a lot of time with different skills and things that we're trying to learn. If you were trying to learn to play the guitar, you're better off studying or, or playing the guitar 15 minutes a day versus one hour on the weekend. You will get better faster. So that's what you want to do with your study schedule as well. You want to make sure that you are building in time almost every day if you can leading up to the test. So we're going to talk about some different types of study schedules and these study schedules are based on a method called spaced repetition. And what this really means is that you want to keep going back to topics and you don't want to kind of fully move on from a topic. So when you're doing that repetition, you want to space it out. So we might take a topic that we're trying to learn, uh, let's say the cardiovascular system, we're going to want to put that on our study schedule for a Monday and then again on a Wednesday, and then again on Sunday, and maybe the following Tuesday, until we feel like we've really mastered that subject. Now we're gonna put some other topics in between that in the study schedule, but we're not gonna study cardiovascular system for seven hours on Monday and completely move on from it unless we really, really feel like we've mastered it. So that's kind of the spaced repetition. Now these study schedules are called revision timetables. And what this really means is we're gonna create a timetable whether it's on a calendar or like a Google Sheet or an Excel Sheet and we're going to plot out when we're gonna go back to different topics. 
Now, a retrospective timetable is when we're looking backwards at what we've studied and we kind of assess ourselves and how we feel about those topics and how well we know them. And then we're gonna look at that and say, today, what are we gonna study? Well, let's look at what we've already studied, which areas we didn't feel good about, and now that's what we're gonna study today. So it's kind of looking backwards to figure out what you're gonna study today. Now, a prospective revision timetable is really looking only in the future. You're gonna plot out on a calendar, on a you know sheet, exactly what you're gonna study on what days and at what times. And then you stick to that schedule. And of course, you're adding in those topics periodically, you're spreading them out, you're repeating them, doing that spaced repetition. But we're just gonna stick to that and we're gonna go forward so we know what we're doing every day and we kinda try and stick to that schedule. One question we get all the time in our Facebook study group is, should I study just one subject and then the next subject and then the next subject, or should I mix in different subjects as I'm going along or study math one day and science the next day and you know English the next day? And really, if you've been watching this video, you'll probably get an idea of what I'm gonna say. It is okay to start with a subject, and move through that for a bit and identify what topics you really need more help with. And those are the ones you're gonna to wanna to keep coming back to, but you don't need to do the whole subject, just the ones that you need uh, you know, more help, those weak areas. So then you move from math to science and you're gonna start studying science and working through those topics. But what you need to do is leave a little bit of time to go back to those weak areas uh, from math. And you're gonna work that in a little bit while you're doing the science, just so that you get that active recall, you're spacing out the repetition. And then you can move on to reading and English, and you might carry over some of that math and science, just the areas that you really need help on. All right, so let's go ahead and actually create a study schedule. So this is gonna be a revision timetable that is a retrospective revision timetable. And all you need is an Excel sheet or a Google sheet. In this case, I have a Google sheet. Now this sheet is linked below. It's got everything pre-filled out. It's sort of a template for you so that you can go ahead and create this uh, study schedule for yourself. So the first thing you do is in the first column, you wanna list all the topics for any particular subject area of the test. So for the TEAS, you know, I have in the tabs down here, the science section, the reading section, math, English, and so on. And we'll kind of work within this um, science section. And you'll see all the topics here. And I'm getting all these topics actually from the Smart Edition Academy online course. So uh, I took a practice test here. And at the end of the practice test, it gives you a scored report. That scored report breaks down each question by the topic that it relates to. So we can see all the topics that are on the science section, all the questions that were asked for each topic, and the scores that I got for each of those. So I can kind of identify what my strengths and weaknesses are. That'll come into play later. Uh, but this is where I'm getting all these topics from. And I've already added these in there. And like I said, you can download these uh, in the description. So you have all your topics. And then in the first row, you want to have your start date. So this is going to be the first date that you start studying any particular topic. And then as you go back and revisit that topic and study it again another day, uh, that will be revision one or revision two, three, and so on as you continue to go back uh, and study those topics. And this is your space repetition that kind of creates and promotes that active recall. So you're going back over and over again and studying that topic so you retain a lot more of that information. So let's go ahead and fill this out. Uh, I'm going to start with the introduction to biology and I'm going to put the date that I first started studying. Let's say 625. And then what you want to do is rank yourself for how well you feel like you know that information. So you can use a scale of one to 10. You could use color coding where like red is you don't know it well, green, you know it well, yellow, uh, you're okay, but you need to study it more. Um, or you could kind of take this practice test if you have the online course, um, you could take this practice test and just put in your percentage score. So a 33% or 100% or 50%, 25% and put those in here and it's going to do the same thing and just kind of give you an idea of how well you know that information. So I'm just going to rank myself one through 10 and I'm going to say introduction biology. Biology I happen to know pretty well so uh, I'm going to give myself a nine. When it gets into some of these A&P subjects I don't know them as well. Uh, I happen to study that on the same day uh, so I'm going to give myself a, a two um, and maybe I'll just go through and I'll do another day 626 and I'll give myself a five and let's go ahead and fill this out as you're studying and you know rank yourself accordingly. All right, so this is fully filled out. We've done our study sessions. We have an idea of 
what we've studied and how well we feel about it, how well we think we are doing in that subject area. So what we want to do is look backwards, right? So we did all this studying, uh, finished on 628. Now I go to study on June 29th, let's say to Monday, and I want to figure out what am I going to study today? What would get me the most amount of progress? What would help me raise my score the most on the TEST test? So I'm going to go through here and I mean, it's pretty obvious uh, if chemical bonds was something I was struggling with, you know, I ranked myself a one on that. Um, let's see, I ranked myself a one here as well. And, you know, I've got a few twos here. Um, so what you want to do is go ahead and uh, start studying those topics again. You want to do your first revision on the topics that you did the least well on or that you don't feel good about. So I went ahead and studied this again. I did it the next day on 629. I felt a little better, so I'm going to give myself a five. Um, and then I focused on these areas that I was weakest on on these particular on this particular day. Uh, and I feel that I'm getting better. So I gave myself a six here and. And I'm still struggling on the organization of the human body. I was at two. I'm not, I'm not feeling much better. I'm just going to give myself a three. Right, and so you go through and kind of continue to do this revision based on what you have been doing in the past and how well you feel about those subjects. And you just keep building this out. So uh, as you revise each topic, you should start to see yourself get a little better each time. So maybe I go back to this on July 5th and I'm going to give myself a seven. And on my third revision on seven, six, uh, I finally got myself to feel like I have a nine. Now I've kind of cleared out this topic, chemical bonds. I'm, I'm probably pretty good on it. I should really be focusing on uh, topics that I've ranked myself lower. So that's kind of how you build this out. And you just kind of keep looking backwards, look at everything that you've been studying, how well you feel about it. And then those are the topics that you want to study on that particular day. So that is a retrospective revision timetable. Now let's go ahead and, and look at a prospective revision timetable. Now what this does is a little bit different. Instead of looking at what we've studied in the past and how we felt about it, we're just going to look into the future and we're going to plot out this whole monthly calendar with all the topics that we're going to study. And, and then we're just going to do that every day. So we don't really have that uh, ability to choose what we want that day. We're just going to make a little more of a rigid schedule that says exactly what we'll study. So the way to do this uh, prospective revision schedule is I will go ahead and start on Monday. Maybe I'm going to start on the AMP system. So I'll do cardio this day and I'll do the rest. I'll do the skeletal system and I will do the urinary system. Okay. I've got that on Monday. So what you want to do is start on the day and then you want to go back the next day and study those same topics, right? So I'm going to put that the next day and then you want to go back one week later and study those topics again. And then again, one month later. So this could be four or five weeks. I'll just put it down here. And this is building in that space repetition and that active recall. So you're scheduling yourself to go back to these topics. Um, and then I'll do this again, just one more time. We'll do it here. I'll start filling out my calendar in this way and I'll put it on the next day and then one week later and then one month later. And you fill out your whole calendar in this way. Now, if you're an expert on math and you are getting 90% on the practice test, you don't really need to put much of math into your calendar. You want to more focus on the areas that you think you need more help on. Now, this also is not going to work well if you only have one week to study, if you're cramming for the test. These schedules aren't really going to work out for you. This is if you have a couple of weeks. So if you have four to eight weeks or more, these schedules can be great and you should be able to fit in all the topics uh, if you've got a, a, you know, some time each day. And we talked about you want to be studying each day rather than you know one time uh, on a Saturday. So you should be able to build in all the topics for all the different subjects over the course of a month or two. So that's how this prospective works. And, and you're just looking forward. You've got everything planned out every single day so that you know exactly what to study. And so this is how you create this type of study schedule. And now you should be able to go ahead and create that for yourself. 
So I really hope you found a lot of value in this video and you will now be able to create your own study schedule. Now I mentioned those other videos and I want you to check those out. We'll put them right up here. This is uh, how to study for the TIS and how to kind of just study in general, general tips and tricks. So I want you to check those videos out. And then if you have any comments or you have anything you wanna add on what's working for you, leave them in the comments below so everybody else can see. And we'll take that into account when we make more videos. Uh, and until then, good luck on the test guys and we'll see you in the next video.